Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover, I am Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we rejoin Earl Waltheof Sewerton of Northamptonshire and he is probably feeling very smug with himself right now, he's probably feeling very happy with himself and the world and life in general because last time out everything just went very well for him. Things turned out very nicely indeed and we got a lot of very important things done. The most important thing that happened last time can be seen down here because of course Earl Waltheof and Countess Ermgard welcomed their firstborn and there he is. T. Waltheofson Cupboard, the heir to the Cupboard Dynasty and that's very important. We have an heir which is wonderful so if something were to happen to our characters there the game can continue and we can take over T and see how he gets on. I mean hopefully you know Earl Waltheoff will be around for a little while yet, but we have an heir, it's very important. And there he is, T. Waltheoff's uncovered, he's very tiny. I mean, T was the easiest, the easiest name choice we've ever had for any of these things. He was always going to be called T. But look at that, even though he is, how old is he? He's three days old. He's only three days old. He stood up at three days old, which is, that's very impressive. Well done, T. That bodes well for the dynasty. That's very impressive. Even though he's only three days old, he's already got these claims. Because, of course, he is the heir to the dynasty and we own these. So he is due to inherit these at some point. So he's three days old and legally he has claims on these three counties here. So there you go. Look at this, my son. All this shall soon be yours. We'll try and get you some more, I think, though. We'll try and get you some more territory. I mean, we're working a little bit over here. We'll add Staffordshire on. This can be, you know, sort of, you know, baby's first kingdoms. And then, yeah, we'll improve it. We'll add some more bits and bobs on. But that's very important. We've got an heir in. That is wonderful. Now, that's very good, you two. And, of course, he's only three days old. So, yeah, we'll give you a bit of a break. We'll let you get used to your know, parenthood and all that kind of stuff. But we could do with some more children. We could do with some more. One is brilliant. More is even more brilliant. So yeah, if we could get the, the kids in, please, that would be really good. You get writing letters to the stork again. That would be splendid. Thank you very much, you two. So that was probably the most important thing we did. Because yeah, you need an heir. Otherwise the game would have ended. So very important that he's in. So yes, welcome to the world, T Cupboard. We also last time took control of Warwickshire, so we fabricated a claim on this and then sent the troops in. And again, yeah, it was a nice, easy sort of run-in for Earl Waltheos' first military engagement. Uh, and yeah, we just took it with relative ease. Now, they were supposed to be allied. Well, they were allied. Warwickshire and Staffordshire were allied. But the uh, the troops from Staffordshire didn't really do anything. They were pretty useless with the Staffordshire troops. So uh, they didn't really help. However, it made us aware that Staffordshire does not have many troops. So now we've got a claim going in on them. Because yes, we can take that. That's relatively easy pickings. They've got 227 soldiers. We've got over a thousand. So we outnumber them a great deal. So we should be able to relatively easily go in and take Staffordshire. And that's, you know, more holdings and more land and more money and levies and all that kind of stuff. So it makes sense for us to go and grab that whilst we're there. And then we want to see where we want to claim next. Because these claims take ages. It takes a very long time to fabricate these claims. So we want to make sure as soon as that one's done, we start claiming another place. I mean, I'm thinking over here, maybe Shropshire... Worcestershire and Herefordshire might be quite nice to get our hands on. I'd love to get sort of Leicestershire, Nottingham, Derby and get kind of this block in the middle. But I think they are owned by, yes, they're owned by Duke Maridud, who is our liege. And we don't really want to go to war with him because that would be a bit silly. So, uh, yeah, we can't get those, unfortunately. So we might have to kind of go out sort of to the west here, get those three. But that's fine. But, I mean, that's going to take ages to get done anyway. So we'll be waiting a little while for that. We also discovered last time that, if we go to Hooks and Secrets, we discovered that uh, the chappy there, Reeve Seewald of Norman Cross, so our marshal, so our best military leader, and a knight, so a noble, upstanding knight, is also a cannibal. So our military leader and a knight, yeah, he eats people, which was a bit of a surprise to find out. But of course, we have blackmailed him. Of course we have. So we now have a strong hook on him. So we can get him to go and do things. We can just sort of you know, go up to him and go, we want you to do that. Or I'll tell everybody that you're a cannibal and you eat people. And hopefully he will agree to our demands. But there we go. So we figured out that he was a cannibal, which was very unexpected. But there we go. You know, each their own, all that kind of stuff. And we also got ourselves a few points down here as well. We got ourselves firm hand and we got Praetorian Guard. So we've got a couple of diplomacy perks spent in here, which is lovely. So we're getting ourselves a nice boost of prestige. So yeah, that's monthly prestige per dread. Uh, I don't know what our dread is actually. And that's monthly prestige per knight. So we're getting that's We get 10% from the knight one. What's our dread? 20. 
Okay, so we get ourselves an extra 30% prestige, which is good because prestige is useful. We use it to declare wars and our fights and we spend it on other bits and bobs as well. So it's always good to have quite a bit of prestige. However, one big thing that we need to look at right now um, was something that a lot of people expressed concern about last time in the comments. And that's, that's this hat here. Lots of people said that they did not like this wonderful hat. I mean, I don't know what the problem is with this hat. It is brilliant. But do you know what? Everybody doesn't like it. So I'm not going to fly in the face of popular opinion. We shall change the hat to something more suitable. Fine. There we go. A cone-shaped hat. A completely ordinary and normal hat that surely nobody can have any complaints about. So are we all happy? Splendid. Let's move on. So there are a few bits and bobs that I want to get done just before we actually kick things off and get time moving. But I think to start with, let's take a look at these three wars down here. Because I know about this war. That's okay. That's the Norwegian invasion. I kind of know a little bit about that. But these two wars here, I'm not entirely sure what these are about. I don't know who is fighting who and for what. And I feel like we should probably know about that. Because, you know, we're an earl and we own lands. We should be a little bit more up to date on current affairs, let's say. So we'll go and check those out and see who is fighting who. This one here, yeah. This is the Norwegian invasion. It's still going on. It shows no signs of ever going away. I mean, it's on a plus 8% war score for our side. So King William, so William the Conqueror of England, is currently winning this war, but not by very much. And it just keeps going back and forth. The Norwegians come in, they grab a few territories, they have a few fights. Then the big bulk of kind of William's troops come up and they win more fights. They take back those territories and the score just keeps fluctuating. So, I mean, that when did that start? Five years ago that started. Can you two just <laughs> just shake hands and just, you know, call it off, please? Because it's just not going to work, is it? It's not going to work, Harold Hardrada. It's just not happening for you. But there we go. I mean, you know, I admire your persistence, but it'd be nice if we could just, you know, just give it up for a bit and then clear this out of the way. But there we go. So that shows no signs of really being resolved. What's this one here? The de Hubarth de Jure War for the Lordship of Brecknock. Okay, what is that? That's over here. Uh, oh, oh, right, absolutely, yes. There is very much a place on fire. Yeah, okay, that place is a little bit on fire. That's probably being attacked. So who is fighting who for what? Okay, so it's just there. So the defender is Lord Bledin of Brecknock. Okay, so you own this place here. You own that little sort of county there. And the attacker is Prince Maradud. Okay, he is our, Maradud's our liege. Um, I don't think he... No, he doesn't look right. No, there's our liege. Hang on a minute. That's our liege. He's too... Oh, <laughs> okay. Right, I've been confused because two people have the same name. This is Duke Maradud with, with the big, big bushy beard. He's our liege, but he's on the side of defence. So he's joined in with Chappie here who lives in Brecknock and they're defending against Prince Maradud down here over in the sort of southwest corner of Wales. Okay, that's fine. Also, I don't know if it's pronounced Maradud or Maraduth or Maradub or whatever. I don't know. I'll say Maradud because that's probably wrong, but I don't know how else to say it that's right. So we'll say Maradud for now until somebody corrects me. Um, so yeah, so he's attacking and on the defending side is the person who owns it. And then also our liege. So he's engaged in a bit of a defensive kind of fight there. Although to be fair, it looks like it might all be over relatively soon because what's going on here? There's a siege going on. There's only 28 days left in that siege. That's not very long. That's not very long at all. And also, yeah, they've got the kind of, you know, the siege machines and all that kind of stuff as well. So that might be over relatively soon. And then we've got this here. So that's the Brynek claim on the Principality of Gwynedd. So that's our liege's war. So that is, that's our Maritud. Okay, supported by his buddy. So Lord Bledin of Brecknock. So, you know, they're allied together. And he is fighting Prince... Bledin. <laughs> Are there any two names? Have you only got two names? You've got Maradud and you've got Bledin. Okay, this is very confusing. So now Prince Bledin owns this territory up here and he is defending against Duke Maradud, who is our liege, who is attacking. So he's after that territory. So our liege is after getting these bits over here in Wales. Okie doke. And that's going very well. That's going very well indeed. In 15 months, he's done all these things. I mean, wow, you've planned that well. Because, yeah, that's, that started not that long ago. And you are looking like you're going to win momentarily. So, yeah, we need, he needs a 6% increase in his war score. So he needs to win another battle or take another holding or whatever. And then it will be done. And that war will be over. Okay, so they're not really directly bothering us, those wars. They're not really kind of influencing us. I mean, they're going on and we might see some territory change hands and this might swap over and some of that might happen as well. It might just flit about. But uh, yeah, they're not really going to bother us. And of course, yeah, the Norwegian war shows no signs of ever stopping ever. 
So knowing that those wars are not really bothering us, we can just turn our attention back to here. So we can just go back to what we were doing and look after our counties. We can go and grab Staffordshire when the time is right. What we're going to do right now, we're going to give our, our steward here a bit of a different job. So currently he's going around and he's collecting taxes. And that's fine. That's okay. He's rapping on people's doors, getting them to pay their taxes. They chuck some gold at him. It's all good. Which means he gets a plus 8% increase in our tax revenue which is okay, that's nice, that gives us a bit of gold. But we can do this thing here. He can go forth and increase the development level in a county. So all counties have development level. So it's just here and it shows how well the infrastructure is put together in a county and how technologically advanced they are. So I imagine if you've got a very low development, then you've probably not really got any roads and everyone probably lives in you know straw huts and there's not really anything very technologically advanced. Whereas if you've got a high development, you've probably got proper roads and bridges and really sort of good fancy sort of technology for the time and all that kind of stuff. So we want to get that higher because also higher development increases the levy taxes and supply limit gained from a county. So if we upgrade the development, we can get more troops, we can get more money, and our region there can support a higher number of troops when they're in it to try and you know, replenish them back up to full strength and stuff. That's what the supply limit is, I believe. So what we want to do is we can go to Chappie here and we can say increase development in a county, please. So we can go here and we can tell him to go over and increase development in Northampton. So he's going to stop doing his sort of tax gathering and he's going to go and, I don't know, build some roads and get some bridges in. Because Northampton has a development of eight, which is okay. Doesn't really give us much. It gives us levels increased by 4%, taxes uh, increased by 4%. If we look over here in Warwickshire, they've got a development of 10. And I kind of feel like Northampton as you know, our actual home and our sort of you know county capital, that needs to be at least equal. So we need to get that up a little bit. But they have development of uh, 10, which gives you 5% increase to your levies, 5% to taxes. So you do get more from it and it's permanent. It's just a permanent increase. I don't know if development can, can go down. I'm not sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's a permanent thing. So we'll get you working on that. I think that takes quite a long while, but that's absolutely fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll chip away at that. It's okay. It takes ages, but I mean, so does everything else. So does everything else. Crusader Kings is a game about, it's about being patient and stuff. You know, it takes a while to happen and the ages pass and all that kind of stuff. So we're in no real hurry. It, it'll get it done. The next thing we want to look at, because there are a few things that we need to deal with, is up here. So we keep being reminded by our lovely little kind of stained glass window reminder pointer thing that Donald Dunkeld, who is our half-brother and also our chancellor, who's dealing with all the kind of diplomatic stuff, he can marry. It keeps reminding us this because he's not married. However, he is 38 years old. So we might struggle to find lots of people who want to marry him because, you know, he's on the older side of things and he's not massively important. He's not like a king or anything. Uh, he's just, you know, a chancellor. He does have a claim to the uh, Kingdom of Scotland, which might sway a few people. But yeah, we can go and um, we can go and see if we can find him a bride. So that will be quite nice. So let's go and do that now. So we'll arrange a marriage. I don't know why we're arranging this. Why are we arranging this marriage? You are 38 years old. Can you not do this yourself? <laughs> Why must we do this? It's the hat, isn't it? We've got a wonderful hat and people look at us and go, hey, you, you've got that fancy hat on. That means you're probably going to be good at organising this marriage. Whereas Donald's just wearing a, I don't even know what that is, a rag, just a bit of old cloth he found on the floor and he's popped it on his head. He's pretending it's a hat. It's not good enough, Donald. It's not good enough at all. So yeah, they're going to the people with the fancy hat to organise this. So now we need to figure out who he can actually get married to. There's 884 potential characters that we might be able to marry him to. That's quite a lot. Now, what we could do is we could filter it down to people that might give us either alliances or some claims. The only thing I'm not 100% sure on is how this works in regard to us, because he is in House Dunkeld. He's not in House Cupboard. He's in a different house. So if we get him to marry somebody who's got claims on a particular piece of land, do those claims go to us because he's in our court and he's our half-brother, or does it go to House Dunkeld? I don't really know. I don't know how that works. But you know what? We'll find out. It's fine. So let's have a look at alliances first. I mean, can we get an alliance with anybody? So you can filter it down. Uh, okay, there's quite a few. There's 29 characters that might give us an alliance. Okay, well, let's look through these. So very handily, you can organise this list. You can order it by alliance power to show the people with the best alliances at the top. So if we do that, we get, uh, I don't know how you say that, Jimenea, Jimenea, possibly Jimena, Sanchez de Leon. Um, she is over here in the county of Astorga. So it's over there, kind of on what, northwest sort of uh, Spain there, over that way. Um, however, 
She is seven years old, so they can't get married straight away. They will have to be betrothed. Um, and she has to become 16 so they can get married. So that's another nine years. That's another nine years. Now, when that happens, he's going to be 47 years old, if he's alive at all. Because, yes, he might have died by that point. Because, you know, it's 1071 and people didn't live that long all the time. So that might be a bit of an issue. She seems quite young. And also their alliance is not that brilliant 756 troops i mean it's better than nothing but they're quite far away they're quite far away i don't see them hurrying to our help anytime soon it'd be more useful if we could get somebody over here say that would be far better but of course as we go down the list yes there are alliances but they're becoming smaller and smaller so for example here let's look at this the earldom of briefna is over here in ireland 385 that's not very much at all but it is in ireland so they might be able to help us out a little bit because they're a bit nearer. So they could send some people over, possibly. I mean, they're going to get there a lot quicker than they are from over here. Let's put it that way. So maybe we go for you. But how old were you? Which one were you? Oh, you're two. You're two years old. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? That's not going to work. Hang on. Can we sort it by age? Who is the... Oh, hang on. Hang on. Other end, other end. Who's the oldest? Um, so there is someone who's 42. Uh, where are you? You're down here, again, in kind of that area of Spain, uh, 404. Oh, that's not really worth it. It's not really worth it, I don't think. And you're in Orlamund, which is absolutely a gazillion miles away. And that's probably not going to be worth having right now. Okay, right. Never mind with that, then. We won't do that. Maybe we will look at possible claims instead, then. Let's put alliances back to all. Let's have a look to see if anybody has any claims that we might want to get our hands on. Oh, okay, there's hardly any, and of the six that there are, five of them are children. And there's only this lady here who's got an absolutely amazing name. I'm going to try it. Uh, okay, here we go. Buck yourselves in, everybody. Judith Budweindochter van Vlaanderen. Possibly. Judith Budweindochter van Vlaanderen. Maybe. I, I don't know. Is, is that how you pronounce that? I'm, I'm not highly sure. But that that's, that's a very big name. It's a very big name. You're going to need very long forms to write your name on there. But okay, lots of characters. So she's 36. So she's similar in age to uh, Donald here. And she does have claims on the Duchy of Flanders, the County of Bruges, the County of Ypres, and the County of Lille. So that's sort of, yeah, that's north, isn't it? That's North France area. Yeah, sort of across the channel. That could be useful. That could be useful. So we could get a claim on that duchy there and the counties that are in it. That could be quite handy. That could be useful. But over here, we can see that these two children here, so Enugwen and Riandrek, um, they have claims on the earldom of Cornwall, which is also quite useful. So we could get ourselves Cornwall if we wanted to. I mean, it's a bit remote from where we are now, but I guess we could work our way around to it. The only thing is that uh, ultimately Cornwall is managed by uh, King William, the Conqueror, who obviously is the new king. He might not be overly happy if we start taking his places. So maybe we go for that one over there, because she's 36 as well, so she's similar age. We don't have to wait for anything to happen. They can just get married pretty much straight away. How about we pick you? Let's go over there and get married over to you. So Judith, crazy long name. Let's see how that works. So you are going to accept, which is good. Um, there is no chance of children. Why is there no chance of children? Why? Why? 38 and 36, surely that can happen. Is she, actually, is she terrible? She's a flamboyant trickster. She's a, she's a trickster. She's sadistic. She's honest. <laughs> At least she's honest about it. And she's stubborn. Okay, and your spouse is dead, ah, but you died of natural causes. You you were not sadistically killed by your wife. Oh, but she's honest, so she would have told everyone about it. So of course you weren't. Okay, maybe we'll go for you then. Even though there's no chance of children, we might still be able to get our hands on those sort of uh, areas there, possibly. But do we want to go for Cornwall? Because Cornwall's a bit more... If we're trying to get, in the long run, try and get hold of England, at least that is a claim. At least that is a claim down there. Do you know what? Let's go for, let's go for Cornwall, shall we? Hang on a minute. Let's go back to there. Uh, go back in tier, range your spouse. Um, yeah, there were two of you. Let's marry... It was the older one, wasn't it? There's 13 and 12. So we can't marry you straight away. But in three years... You will be able to get married to Riant Drek Mech Kadok now and possibly have a claim on Cornwall. Okay. So it says chance of children, none, but that's because they're getting betrothed, I imagine. So yeah, they're going to wait a while until they start writing letters. Inheritable traits are they could have some handsome children. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go for that, I think. So yeah, we'll try and get our hands on a bit of Cornwall, I think, because over there, I think that might be a little bit might be a little bit distant. I think that might be a bit far away. 
And of course, yeah, then we have to take on the entirety of France if we maybe want to take that militarily, which could be a bit of a problem. So uh, yeah, let's go for this. Let's go for Cornwall. So okay, we will send that request away and we'll see what they say. And I think now we can actually get time moving again. Enough stuff has been sorted out and enough jibber jabbering has gone on. So let's move time on and let's see what's happening. So yeah, that claim is ticking up very, very slowly indeed. I would gladly accept your betrothal proposition. I will graciously take the hand of your brother Donald when the time comes. Oh, that's lovely. Excellent. Okay, so a little while to go then. So three years until that happens, but that's absolutely fine. At least that's one thing that's done. And yeah, look, our little sort of issues thing now is just telling us about those wars that we can do. And that's fine. We kind of know about that. Spouse. Tourney day. Ooh. Okay, I mean, there's a red look. That looks a bit sinister and it played a sinister noise. The sun is shining and peasants are milling about the tourney, hosted by my wife. All my knights cheer as Countess Ermgard announces the tournament in their honour, and for once, I get to simply sit and watch. I'm not going to spend an entire tourney day stuck to a throne, however. So I too cheer my knights. Every knight gains 20 opinion of us for eight years. Oh, that's quite good. Well, this day is in our honour, dear and we get 75 prestige. We're already earning quite a lot of prestige anyway. We get an okay amount of that, so maybe we will get the opinion of all of our knights up, because that could be quite good. We want them to stay loyal to us and not get drawn away by other people. So absolutely, yeah, Let, let's cheer on our knights. Let's go. Oh, that's exciting. I like the way those little events pop up. So, you know, it's not just, you know, stuff is happening. Stuff is happening. We're doing stuff and we're having, you know, people around for dinner and guests and tournaments and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it makes it feel a little bit more like, you know, we're not just sitting watching stuff happen. We're not watching somebody go and increase development in a county. You know, life is happening and things are going on around the place. Uh, okay. Bortmeyer has been swayed. Okay, right. Remind me who you are. You're a knight. Ah, yes. Okay, but we wanted you to stay because you weren't really happy with us because we booted you out of the council. So now you seem to be happy with us. So let's turn our attention to swaying somebody else. Right, is there anybody else on the council that we could do with swaying? Ah, Chappie here. Reeve Eadwolf. He's got no opinion of us either way. He's not bothered that we exist. So how about we now try and sway you? Because that would be handy to get that increased. That would be quite nice. I'd love to get a new, um, a new spy master. Because this guy is rubbish. <laughs> he's just terrible. And it's unfortunate because he's a powerful vassal. So he thinks himself important. He's just awful. He's really, really quite terrible indeed. He's also wearing a rubbish hat. Which, again, you know, reinforces the point that he's just terrible. So, I mean, his highest skill is intrigue of eight. Which is poor. So we could do with replacing him. He will get very grumpy. He'll get grumpy if we replace him. Right now, however, have we got even anybody to replace him with? I don't think so. Not really. A knight, but they've only got one more point. To, oh no, three more points of intrigue, sorry. But that's still not wonderful. It's not worth annoying him to the point where he might try and, you know, murder us a bit just to get somebody with three more points of intrigue. If somebody came in with 16 intrigue or something, then yeah, we'd probably swap it around. But okay, fine. You can stay for now. You can stay for now. Get better at spying. And both of those wars have been sorted out. So our liege won their war with Prince Bledin or Bledin. So up here, ah, yeah, look, there you go. So our chappie, Duke Maradud, now has control of that territory up there in northwest Wales. So he's got all of that. He's got so much territory. The Duchy of, uh, how have you pronounce that, Brynjach, goes a heck of a long way. It covers an awful lot of territory. But there we go. So he's got those places there, which, yeah, that's good. Well done. You won that war. That means that so stops all the fighting. And over here in Brecknock... It looks like they managed to, to defend that against the chappie down there, I think. It looks like that was successfully defended. Or was it? Hang on. Lord Bledin is still in charge. So yeah, he's the county holder. So I assume that that actually worked out well. I think that's what that means. Yeah, he's still in charge. So he's not been ousted. So I think, I think they won that one as well. Although it did look a bit dicey, didn't it, at one point. But okay, that's fine. Well, there you go. He's won that. Well done. So there we go. So all the wars... The two wars have gone. And then, of course, we have that silly Norwegian invasion war that is still going on. Uh, greetings, old Walthy of Northamptonshire. I've heard good things about you. And I'm interested in starting a written conversation. Okay, yes, absolutely. We will carry on writing too. Yeah, we've got a few pen pals at the minute. We've got a few pen pals. So we'll see what you want as well. Now, the other two, we kept chucking money at them. I don't want to keep throwing my money at people. I'd like it if you just, if I could pick one of these. So what are we going to talk about? The finer points of etiquette, that's me leading that. And that does seem a bit self-aggrandizing. I don't really like doing that. So, hey, here's the thing that I am good at. Let me tell you about how brilliant I am. So let's not do that. Please tell me about theological treatises. Okay, your 
club-footed, you're an insightful thinker, arbitrary, callous, and honest. Um, and you are all right at learning. So that's where more sort of theological stuff is in the learning bit. Um, I don't want to give you the money. I don't want to give you 50 of your monies. So I'd rather go down this route. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and never mind. But if it does work, then that's a good thing. But yeah, we can't just keep chucking our money at the next person that writes the letter. <laughs> That's not how this is going to work anymore. People have cottoned on to this idea now. They're like, hey, if I write a letter to Earl Walthy off, he just chucks money at you. That's brilliant. So no, let's not do that anymore. Um, Tell me about theological treatises or treaties or whatever, because I'm really interested in that and I find it really fascinating. Please tell me more about these interesting things. Now, it doesn't take them that long to write back, normally, does it? The letter's probably, you know, in the post over here. I've put a stamp on it and everything. So it's coming back. To think that you would ask about a subject so dear to me. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Yay, it worked. You truly know me better than most since you've indulged me. So I must ask if there's anything I can do. So we can do this and maybe gain 300 uh, lifestyle experience. We could get trade deal or we could try and get a weak hook on him. I'm not so bothered by getting a weak hook. I would rather get some experience for our lifestyle down there. So 53% chance we get 300 46% chance we get 100. Who knows where the other 1% has gone? It's lost. It's lost to history. So, yeah, let's do that. So we get a, a nice opinion boost as well of Duke Ralph. So where are you again? Oh, yeah, you're down there. You're, yeah, you're not exactly our neighbour, but you're not too far away. You're not too far away. You live down the road. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's continue to exchange letters and we'll see if we can get some diplomacy lifestyle experience. We got 300. That's brilliant. Our correspondence teaches me a lot about foreign affairs. Oh, that's very, very helpful indeed. Okay, that's great. That's really good. So that puts us, what are we on? 640. Yeah, that's moved us very, very far along that tree. That's wonderful. Good. R people write me more letters. Hang on, something has happened to Leicestershire and Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. They're no longer under control of Brainiac. They don't seem to be under control of him anymore. And that one is, Nottinghamshire is, but Leicestershire and Derby seem to be their own things again now. They are their own entities looked after independently. They're not sort of fallen under Brainiac control. What's happened there? Is that right? Is he dead? Has the guy died? Oh, Stefan is looking after Leicestershire now and he's reporting up to Maritud. Okay, so Maritud still looks after it. I wonder, with this war over here, is Maritud looking after all these places over here? Yeah, so Maritud is directly himself looking after that and that place there, and that place there, and that place there. So he's now personally looking after those four places. Uh, not that one, though. So what must have happened is, uh, when you are able to sort of rule places, you can look after a certain number of places personally yourself. And we can do that. We can look after up to seven holdings. At the moment, we've got three. So we've got Warwickshire, Northamptonshire, and Huntingdonshire. They're under our control, so we can look after those three. And that's fine. That's okay. We're fine for now. But uh, if we were to take on more, so let's say we get Staffordshire, that'll go up to four. We can hold up to seven. If we get more than that, we can do that, but things start falling apart a little bit and your taxes come down and everything just gets a little bit unruly because you're struggling to manage the sort of goings on of all those places. So what Chappie here has done, what our liege has done, Maradud has obviously got too busy. He's had too many places under his direct control. So he's gone to some of his subordinates. He's gone to his vassals and gone, look, I don't want to look after Leicestershire anymore. I'm, I'm not too bothered. So Earl Stefan, there you go. Have Leicestershire, please. There you go. Manage it for me, would you? That would be splendid. So he is now looking after Leicestershire for Maradud, for Duke Maradud. And Duke Maradud can do that because he's a duke. So he can have subordinate vassals that can look after these places and still report into him. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, so Leicestershire is under its own control. Derby is also under its own control. Nottingham, he still has a... He still has a hand in Nottinghamshire. So he's still looking after Nottinghamshire. He's not looking after any of those other ones either. Yeah, so Shropshire and Herefordshire and Worcestershire. Yeah, they're still managing themselves, as is Staffordshire. Okay, that's interesting though, because then we were going to look over here. We were going to go for Shropshire and all that kind of stuff. But now maybe when we've got Staffordshire under our control, we could go for Leicestershire because it's in the middle. It makes sense to have that there. And then we'll have this kind of block of sort of counties in the middle there. That would be great if we get that done. That would be wonderful. So, uh, and again, yeah, we're, we're okay to do that. We can get a claim on Earl Stefan because we're claiming Earl Stefan's earldom, if you like. So we're going to say, no, no, we should be the Earl of Leicestershire. And Earl Stefan will go, no, you won't. And Maradud won't care. 
he won't care who the Earl of Leicestershire is as long as they're paying him his taxes and you know giving him his troops when he needs them and doing what he says and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's 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 interesting. That is interesting. Maybe that will change our plans a bit. So right now we can't do much with that. We can't do much with this. We can't sort of go and claim Leicestershire yet because we've not even got the claim done on Staffordshire. But that is where we're going to go next. Unless he sort of re-establishes control of it. In which case, we can't do anything about it at all. But we will see. Time will tell. Actually, that is going to become a problem for us at some point in the future. So yeah, we've got three holdings right now under our control. We can have up to seven. So it's not going to cause us any problems anytime soon because it's going to take a while to actually get to that point. But it will become a problem because when we get to seven holdings, we can't do anything about them. We can't just give them off to vassals because we can't have any vassals that can look after counties and report into us. And it took me a while to get my head around this. It took me a while to understand this kind of aspect in Crusader Kings. Uh, I'll try and explain it as best I can. So we are playing as an Earl, and an Earl title is the lowest rank you can have that looks after a county. Now there are slightly smaller titles, there's barons and mayors and stuff like that that look after the individual little kind of holdings within a county, but you can't really play as them. So the lowest rank you can have is an Earl. That is the lowest title you can play as that looks after a county. Now what Marida has done here, he's a Duke. So he can have many Earls reporting into him because he's the next tier up. So Earls are at the bottom, Dukes are the next tier up. So he can have loads and loads of Earls reporting into him. So he doesn't have to control all of these territories himself because that would be impossible. He would go out of his mind. So he's decided to look after these ones over here. So Anglesey and Airy and that place. <laughs> Perfedwlad. That place there, that one just there that's lit up, the one with the name that I probably pronounced horribly wrong. So he's looking after those himself. But then other counties, he's gone, nah, I don't want to look after Leicestershire anymore. I'm, I'm bored of that. I like these places over here. I like the mountains. So uh, Stefan, I'm going to make you Earl Stefan. Go and look after Leicestershire, would you please? And he can do that because he's a duke. So he's a tier above. He can have people reporting into him. We can't give people control of counties and retain control of those people. We can't have vassals like that. Because if we were to give somebody control of Huntingdonshire, that would make them an Earl. And we're an Earl, so we would be exactly the same tier, so they can't report into us, if that makes sense. So we're going to have to somehow become a Duke. And to become a Duke, you need to get your hands on a Duchy. So you need to have control of a Duchy of something. That needs to be one of your titles. And there's plenty of them around. These are the Duchies that you can see. All these things here. So there's the Duchy of Defra and the Duchy of... Red, and the Duchy of Gwynedd and De Hubarth and Cornwall and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the one we are looking at that we're trying to get hold of, lots of territories in, is Mercia. That would make sense to try and get hold of lots of those in there and maybe become the Duke of Mercia. And then when we're a Duke, we can have subordinates and we can issue sort of territory out and we don't need to worry about this. But yeah, I don't quite know exactly how we're going to become the Duke of Mercia. I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm not entirely sure. But I mean, it's a little way off now. It's a little way off. We don't need to worry about it right now because we've got ourselves four more counties to grab hold of first. But uh, yeah, at some point that is going to become a bit of a pressing issue. Do you know what though? It's not right now. Let's just move time on. Let's do some stuff. Ooh, heresy. Lollards in Essex. Duke Hugh of Essex. Isn't he our pen pal? Hugh, what have you done? I've announced the world that he and his vassals have converted to Lollardy. I don't know what that is. What's that mean? What's that? It's a Christian faith denouncing many common Christian sacraments like baptism and confession. Lollards hold that the Holy Bible is the only valid source of Christian doctrine and that any teachings not directly based on it are inherently illegitimate. Okay, so ev they believe everything in the Bible is absolutely the truth and nothing else is. Okay, um, yeah, I, I don't fancy joining that because nobody else around here is apart from you there. So yeah, if we now go to religion, there is a religion overview. Um, oh, Oh, crikey. People are converting to Lollardy. Oh, right. Yeah. So this one here. Can we zoom out? Yeah, they go. Look. So Catholic there. Absolutely fine. Bit of Catholic, bit of insular, insular Christianity over there. And then, yeah, we've got then Lollardy over here. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I've never heard of Lollardy. But OK, so it does look like people are embracing it. It does look like other people are doing it. Oh, my goodness me. A third person. These heretical people over here taking on a different religion. Oh dear. Another one in the middle. <gasps> They're right next to us as well. They're right next to us. Oh my goodness. And another one. <laughs> Crikeys. Okay, now I wonder what's going to happen with this. Is there going to be some sort of holy crusade to make them go back to the Catholic ways? Or is that slowly going to spread around England and the bottom here and they're all going to become lollards or what? I don't know. 
Okay, well, that's something we probably do need to keep an eye on. Hopefully, I, mean, I don't know how it spreads. I don't know how it happens. Are we going to get people saying, I'm a Lollard now. I want to go and do that, please. Uh, ah, right. Chappie there has finished increasing control in the county of Warwickshire. So, yeah, control should now be. It's absolute. So, we get plus 5% levies and plus 10% taxes. That's very welcome indeed. Okay, let's clear all those things. Everyone's going over to Lollardism. That's, that, that's okay. Whatever floats your religious boat, you crack on. And we have successfully swayed our steward there. That's quite good. So yes, we've now got up to plus 27 opinion with him. We are suffering a little bit from this thing here. So because we've had a short reign, because we've not been in charge for that long, lots of people don't like us too much. A minus 14 kind of opinion modifier there because we've not been in charge for very long. But of course that will come down. That will obviously decrease. The longer we're in charge, the more that will come down. So hopefully that will go away. That will start coming down relatively soon because we've been in charge for a little while now. We've been in charge for six years that's quite a long time. So uh, there we go. At least he's being swayed. Now we'll do that once more, I think. We'll do that once more. We want to make sure that he does like us quite a bit. Because he's, uh, he's, I mean, he's very good. And he's our steward. So we want to make sure he's quite loyal. Then maybe we want to go and look at the spy master. He doesn't have that much. He doesn't have that much of loyalty toward us. Well, I suppose we could do some of the others as well. I mean, the bishop. Maybe we get the bishop up as well. I don't know. But whatever the case, at least it's worked on one of them. A new claimant. Of all the buffoonery I have ever seen, in Donald's inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbours, my good-for-nothing Chancellor has officially acknowledged Countess Margaret's claim to the Earldom of Warwickshire. Brilliant. Good job, Donald. <laughs> You're supposed to make friends, not enemies. So now she has a claim. That's a free claim. It's taken me ages to get this claim on her county. Um, so she's got an unimpressed claim on the Earldom of Warwickshire. Brilliant. Good job. I mean, you're going to struggle to take it, if I'm honest. You're going to have a bit of a problem in taking it. Let's move time on a little bit quicker. Uh, our brother... <gasps> King Malcolm is dead. We've gained some stress. Our brother, King Malcolm, has died. How has he died? Natural causes at the age of 41. Oh my goodness me. The King of Scotland is dead. The King of Scotland is gone. So now it's gone to uh, you. King Duncan II of Scotland, who is 12. Our nephew, our nephew is running Scotland. Oh, surely we can make some sort of thing with that. Now, I don't think we can. I don't think we can go in and do anything with that. I don't think he really cares about us too much. Uh, we can request a claim from the Pope on his title, but we can't go in and just go, hey, buddy, how are you? Can we please have some of Scotland? Because we're nice and we're your bro. I don't think, uh, not your bro, your uncle. It doesn't work like that. So, okay, so the King of Scotland is dead. There is a new king, okay, which is which is good for them. That's nice. Uh, let's see what happens up there then. Is that going to cause problems? Means a new king popular. I'm not entirely sure. I'm more intent with getting this done. I want to get Staffordshire under our control and immediately get that underway, get a new claim on in Leicestershire. And we can unlock a perk. Ah, lovely. Okay, we can unlock a new perk. So do we go for benevolent intent and get our sway schemes a bit stronger. So that's 30% power. So they'll be done 30% quicker, I believe that means. It doesn't mean there's any more success of them working. They'll just be done a bit faster. Or do we go down befriend and use the befriend scheme? Because then we could start being buddies with people, which does sound like quite a good thing. I mean, maybe say, you know, the King of Scotland, perhaps. It might be quite a good idea to do that. I don't know what being a friend actually does. I don't know kind of what that gives you, but it could be really, really useful to have friends. That could be handy. But then this here means your sway schemes go a little bit quicker, which means more people's opinion of you can go up in a shorter time. And of course, if we take that, it does lead down to here. And then we can get our epic sort of uh, commissioning epic decision in, which is very, very good. Maybe we'll head down toward that. We'll get benevolent intent. Sway schemes, a little bit stronger. I mean, yeah, it's fun. It'll help a tiny bit. And the claim is done. There we go. I have prowled through documents both ancient and of less certain provenance. I finally have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord to the earldom of Staffordshire. Indeed, I could even argue you are the rightful lord to the Duchy of Mercia. What? Hang on, what? I can have a claim on Mercia? Um, okay. So Staffordshire Countess Margaret gets a bit grumpy. And she doesn't like us. We have a claim on Staffordshire. If we claim Mercia, it's 175 gold. Ouch. That's quite expensive. And Duke Maradud loses 30 opinion of us. I think as much as I want to do that, I think we need to build up our other territories first. I think we need to build up territories first. Because we'll, we could do that. We'll go, yay, we've got a claim on the Duchy of Mercia. We can't do anything with it because Duke Maradud is infinitely more powerful than us. So maybe... 
maybe we'll go for Staffordshire first. Let's let's give this a go, shall we? Is this a terrible mistake? We can't go for the Duchy of Mercia right now because the person who owns that title is too powerful. They will just kill us in the face. So we'll we'll get Staffordshire. Let let's do that. It's done now. There we go. There might be people going, no, always take claims on duchies. But there we go. It is done. It is done. Right, and let's get you immediately getting us a claim on Leicestershire, please. Because now we want Leicestershire under our control. And it's already underway. I mean, you know, you had a day off. <laughs> you had a day off. Did you enjoy it? Good. Get back to fabricating claims. Religious refugees. Duke Hugh rules over the nearby earldom of Bedford, which is home to a large number of devout Catholics. The Lollard Duke could easily persecute the faithful Catholics living there, and it is my responsibility to protect them from his hostile influence. Yes, okay, so yeah, he's our neighbour and our pen pal, and he does, yeah, he's gone over to this Lollardism thing. So what are my options again? Uh, Duke Hugh's profile thing, go away, there we go. So we cannot allow him to oppress the faithful, we get an unpressed claim on the Earl of Bedford. Okay, and a hundred piety. Okay, smuggle as many Catholics as we can to safety. The Earl of Huntingdonshire gains religious refugees. So the levy size can go up and we get some money. They get population fled persecution. So their levy size goes down and their taxes absolutely tumble. And he loses opinion of us. What is his opinion of us right now? It's really rubbish. It's really terrible. Or send an envoy to Hugh to discuss their treatment. We gain 100 diplomacy lifestyle experience. And there is a 100% chance, that's quite welcome, that he welcomes my envoy openly. And the Earldom of Bedford gains local faith respected. And plus 20 popular opinion. And he likes us a bit more. Okay. Okay. I don't think... I mean, do we want to get a claim on Bedford? I mean, maybe in due course, but right now, that means if we declare war on that, we're going to be declaring war on William the Conqueror, which is probably a bad idea. So maybe not that. I think maybe we'll send an envoy. Send an envoy over to Hugh to discuss their treatment, because that does work. We get 100 diplomacy lifestyle experience as well. So that's going to be quite good. So yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do that. And his opinion of us goes up, which might stop him from coming to attack us a bit. So yeah, let's do that. Let's send an envoy and we'll just go and talk things out, Hugh. It's all fine. Yeah, we don't need to go to war. We don't need conflict. We can resolve all these things by just having a nice chat over a cup of tea and a cake. Okay, there we go. Right, so Reeve Edwolf gained another 25 opinion of us because that thing has worked. So there we go. We don't need to sway him anymore because he's on plus 54. So who now do we want to sway? I feel like we need to keep our court sort of happy with us. How about the the marshal? We'll do the marshal, then we'll do the spy master, then we'll do the bishop. Yeah, we'll go round. We'll go round the houses. It's all fine. So let's go and do that. Let's go and do a sway scheme on you. Absolutely. Doesn't take as long as it once did. Splendid. So our claim on Staffordshire is in. It's fine. We can go and take Staffordshire if we would like. However, I notice we do have 216 gold, which is very, very welcome indeed. What I think we might want to do is let's go into military and let's create ourselves some men-at-arms regiments. So we can only have four of these at the moment. So these are more sort of permanent troops. The levies are just, you know, peasants with pointy sticks. The knights are important fancy people with armour and horses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but these men-at-arms are sort of permanent troops. That's what they are there to do. We pay them. We pay them a bit of money every month. We pay them more money if they're actually in use. And we pay them a little bit less if they're just uh, stood down, sort of waiting and kicking about the place. But they're like a permanent sort of army. So whereas these are just angry peasants, these are actual proper soldiers. And there's all these different types. I mean, bowmen seem like a good choice to me. Bowmen seem like a nice sensible choice. So they do 25 damage. They've got 10 toughness. And they're good in hills, in forests, and in taiga. Okay, that's kind of like sort of uh, tundra type stuff, isn't it? So, uh, and they counter skirmishers. So we can create those. It costs us 75 gold to actually create a unit of those. So let's do that. Let's get ourselves some bowmen in. So get some archers in. That's very good. And they'll slowly top up. So at the moment, there's five. And we're going to go around and train some more. And that's lovely. They cost us 0.6 per month at full maintenance, but they only cost us 0.2 when they're not actually in use. So when they're not summoned up and ready to fight, it costs us 0.2 a month. That's fine. I think we can cope with that. And then we might want to get ourselves a bit of a siege weapon as well, just to help speed along the sieges of the uh, of the towns. So we've got onagers plus 0.3 a day to the siege, or mangonels plus 0.6 per day. What is the difference in cost? So only eight gold up front, and what do you pay? Full maintenance is 0.3. So 0.3 and 0.10, uh, 0.33 and 0.11. 
I'd rather get the mangonels in when they're eight gold more expensive and they're a tiny bit more to run, but they're much better. They're twice as effective. So we'll get those as well. So let's create that as well. And I don't think we can create any more. We could create some footmen. We could create some light footmen and get our third men at arms unit in. That would be quite good. That would be good to get them in because, you know, this is all extra troops and they're good troops as well. They're properly armed. They've got proper weapons. They've got proper training. Um, do you know what? We've only got 53 gold. Let's do it. Let's absolutely do that. There we go. Right. So we've now got three exciting new men at arms units in. Oh, that's wonderful. That's very good. The Earldom of Northamptonshire gained encouraged development for 10 years. Thanks to our spouse, our wonderful spouse. Development growth is 10% faster. And it's already going to grow a little bit anyway with our chappy there, with our steward going in and encouraging development anyway. That's brilliant. So these are going to slowly top up. It takes a little while, I think. I don't know quite how quickly they replenish. But uh, yeah, so they're slowly, slowly topping up. So when they're full, when they're all at 100, what we'll do is we will then begin our attack on Staffordshire. And I do not think Staffordshire stand much of a chance. Although, look, they've got some more soldiers now. They've gone up from 227, was it, to 327. So well done them. I mean, I feel like it's probably still not going to be enough. But, you know, at least they'll fight back a bit. Oh, OK. Three years have gone by pretty quickly because Donald can now marry the person from Cornwall. There she is. So, yeah, Riont Drek. So there we go. She's now 16. It means that it's no longer a betrothal. We can turn it into a marriage. The chance of children is still entirely none. I don't know why. I don't know why. Surely, surely he's capable of having children. He's 41. He's 41. I mean, that he's not like 101. Surely, surely that still works. OK, I, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe he can't write letters anymore. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, let's do this then. Let's get them done. So send the proposal and they gladly accept. May God grant us long life and many children. You might be a tiny bit disappointed there, but never mind. Now, what does that do for him, however? Does he now have a claim on anything? So she's got a claim on Cornwall. So if we went down to Cornwall now and said, Hi, Earl William, we would like to declare war on you. Yes, that's her claim. And there's no cost. Oh, we can't do it. This interaction is no longer valid to send. Oh, why not? Why not? Also, that would be entirely foolish because we would go, be going up against King William, who's got 12 bazillion troops. Yeah, he's got 10,500 troops. We've got 1,200. OK, I mean, at least we've got the claim in. We've got the claim in. It might take a little while for us to work up that amount of troops. But, uh, but you know, it's fine. It's there and that's good. How are our things looking? Oh, look at that. The war with the Norwegians is almost done. In fact, is this going to be the end of the war with the Norwegians? Is this going to be the end of the Norwegian invasion? Eight years after it started, it could well be. It's at 100%. Is this it? Are we going to see that thing vanish? Countess Ermgard gained major architectural expertise. She's absolutely amazing. Can we not just play as her? She's so much better. Stewardship, another plus two. And it's permanent. It's another permanent increase to her stewardship. So it's now gone up to 17. Oh my goodness me. Okay, that's very, very good. Uh, okay, well done, Ermgard. You're proving to be very, very skilled indeed. Um, yeah, we just need to watch that. There we go. It's finished. The Norwegian invasion of England has finally ended. The Norwegians have been repelled. The war is done. There are now no wars happening that we need to be concerned of. And the Norwegians are hopefully now just going to go away. They're just going to clear off because they've caused so much trouble up here. So finally, it's done. Okay, so our sway scheme has worked on him. That's fine. Let's put it over on to... Let's put it on to the bishop. Let's just make sure that you still like us for a bit longer. So, okay, we will sway you. And let's check on our troops. They're all in. They're all in. All three of our man -at arms regiments are now absolutely fully populated. So there's 100 archers, 100 light footmen and 10 mangonels. I think it might be time to go and have a fight with Staffordshire. So let's change our rally point. So you can change where all the troops appear. It makes no sense for them to appear here and then have to walk over there. So we'll just change the rally point. Uh, we'll pop it over there in Birmingham. We can have an army from Birmingham. And then let's go into here. Let's politely just do a little bit of war declaring. Hello. How are you? Um, I'd like to declare war on you, please. You're inferior. It's only going to cost us 75 prestige. We've got loads of prestige, so we should be fine. So, yeah, OK, let's declare a little tiny bit of war that you've got no allies. I think this is going to be very simple indeed. Right. Raise the armies. Give it a bit of time before they all sort of pour in because all the peasants need to arrive ready for fighting. 
And there we go. I like how the music changes to this proper sort of, it's really sort of warlike sort of big banging drums and boom, boom, boom. It's very good. Um, okay, let's go in. Let's go in and just go straight to Stafford. Now their troops will probably appear there. So there might be a bit of a fight going on. Uh, no, their troops have, have, have bravely ran away. <laughs> <laughs> they're chickening out the clearing off right yeah they're, they've absolutely ran away and we're just immediately just sieging stafford because their troops have not bothered they've gone do you know what do you know our, our home where we live nah i'm not bothered let's let's just run off let's go somewhere else i mean they might be going to siege one of our places they might be thinking ah you're gonna siege us so we'll go and siege you but uh but yeah i don't think you'll get there in time uh what why how They've never quite a quiet moment. My son and heir, T, is so full of questions. I do my best to encourage his curiosity, but sometimes I cannot help but get exhausted by the constant stream of thoughts and queries. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome to parenthood. When a father and a mother love each other very much, they write a letter to the stork. T Cupboard gets the trait curious. So he gets plus one diplomacy and plus one learning. Okay, that's quite good. So there's only three months left before we can siege Stafford. And yeah, it looks like the Stafford troops have come down to try and siege Northampton. But it's going to take them a heck of a long time. I don't imagine they've got any kind of, you know, siege weapons or anything. And they've turned up. I don't think... You need a certain amount of troops to siege a place. Uh, no, they haven't got enough soldiers. <laughs> so they've just turned up at Northampton. And they're just looking up at it going, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it is nice. Lovely walls. Oh, I like what they've done with the battlements at the top there. That's a lovely pattern. So they can't do anything. So they're just stood in Northampton looking at it. I mean, why not pop into the shops whilst you're there? You know, come in. We'll let you in. It's fine. We mean you know ill intent. Come in. Have a little look around. Maybe, you know, visit, I don't know, some of the local pubs and taverns and things. Uh, okay. Ah, this is the Leicestershire thing. Again, another claim on Mercia. I think we need to get Leicestershire as well. That's going to be really good for profit and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Present my claim on Leicestershire. I kind of feel like I should be doing this. That will completely bankrupt us, however. This one is not so bad. That's not so bad. Yeah, go on. Let's do that. Boom. So now we can get Leicestershire as well. And, uh, yeah, the siege is going on. Now, what we can do now, we can continue to just siege it like normal. Oh, hang on a minute. Duke Maradud has declared war on Prince Maradud. Uh, what's going on there? So, Duke Maradud is our buddy and he's declaring war on... Ah, uh, right. Okay. He wants Wales, doesn't he? He wants Wales under his control. He probably wants to be the King of Wales or whatever. And that would make sense because I believe he is Welsh. So that would make perfect sense. Yeah, he's declared war down here on the people over there. Okay, that's fine. Again, that's something that we don't need to necessarily worry about too much. Uh, so yeah, so over to our siege. There's two months left. At the minute, we're just sieging like we always did. We're just doing what we did before. But we can now, if we want to, because we've got siege weapons, I imagine we've made a big hole in their castle. Their walls have sort of fallen apart a bit. So we could assault the fort. It adds 2.4 siege progress per day, but it causes 11 casualties a day because we're obviously pouring our people through into the walls and what have you. But it could end it quicker than 40 days. So why don't we just do that? 15 days. That just reduced the time on that ludicrously. So yes, we are losing some people, but it is bringing the time down to complete this siege very quickly. And of course, when that siege is done and we take Stafford, the war is done. So let's just get that out of the way. And boom, there we go. Our war score is at plus 100% because we occupy the only one place there is in Staffordshire that we can go and occupy. So yeah, okay, let's enforce our demands. We will get ourselves Staffordshire and the two places that are in it. Enforce those demands to the two-faced Waltheoff. May wisdom ever elude you. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So be it. And Staffordshire is ours. And that's very good. Now, what we need to do is we need to get uh, we need to get you in. And we need to get you to go and increase control in Staffordshire. Because it will become a little bit kind of lawless and stuff. And now we can make a move straight on Leicestershire. We can just go straight in. I mean, we won't be able to do the you know, sort, sorting out the control thing straight away. But we can just wander straight in. Hang on. Let's move our troops into a slightly better position. Pop down to Coventry, why don't you? There we go. Have a walk to Coventry. In fact, I don't think we can declare war with troops actually up anyway. So we'll disband our armies. So away with them. And then we'll go and have a chat with Leicestershire. How many troops have you got? 193. <laughs> wow. That's that's really not very many at all. Okay, fine. That This should be very good very simple uh okay well let's let's go and chat to him then hello would you like a bit of war tiny bit of war there so it's gonna cost us 100 of our prestige we've got loads yeah okay 
have a bit of a war. Let's move our rally point over to Coventry. Why not? We can now have a Coventry battle. And we will raise the armies again. And we will just march into Leicester. Yeah, this is... We want to make sure that everyone's actually arrived. Uh, is everyone here for the army party? Yay! There we go. Right. And march over into Leicester. See how this goes. I imagine it's going to go very well. Right. There are the Leicester troops. They can't do much, though. Right. We've caught up with them. I feel a little bit sorry for the poor Leicester troops. <laughs> They've just been completely battered into oblivion. And we've even captured somebody. We've captured Ian here. The Knight of Earl Stefan. Okay, are you any good? Uh, no. You have a prowess of zero. Why are you a knight? <laughs> you, you don't know how to hold a sword. You don't know which end is which. Uh, okay, fine. Well, there you go. We've captured the world's most terrible knight. Let's see how we can get on with um, sieging Leicester. So we could assault the fort for a little bit. 30 casualties a day. Oh, it's coming down to 12 casualties per day. Because there is a large breach in the walls. Okay, that's quite good. Let's do that. Oh, look at that. 25 days and tumbling. This is brilliant. Okay, Leicester will soon be ours. This is wonderful. And then we need to look at where we want to claim next after this. We'll get these two. I mean, maybe, yeah, Shropshire and stuff. But there you go. Leicestershire is ours. We will enforce our demands because our war score is at 100%. Uh, yeah, we get Leicestershire. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not happy either. People are quite grumpy with me that I keep coming in and stealing their titles. But you know what? They're rightfully mine because we've got some obviously not forged documents that say so. Well, let's disband all our troops. We don't need those people anymore. So, yeah, go back to whatever it was we were doing before. And let's go and have a look at our prisoner. So, yeah, what do you want to do with you? So, you're not very good. I don't really want to invite you to our court. Can we ransom you? We can ransom you for a hook. We can negotiate your release for a hook, possibly. Or we could just kill you. I don't feel like we should probably kill you. I mean, yeah, we've captured you. I want to be not quite as horrific as that. Um, so, if we can let you out with a hook... That could be quite good. You're terrified of us as well. Okay, fine. It's the hat, isn't it? It's it's the hat. We're wearing a terrifying hat. I, I knew it was the right choice. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, then you can leave the prison and we'll just gain a weak hook on you. Okay, doke. Well, there we go. We could call that in at some point in the future if we need to. So, yeah, well, I think he thinks about it, doesn't he? Yeah, there we go. I accept your ransom offer and hope to someday show you the same hospitality. A good deal. We get the hook. He clears off. Well, there you go. So, we've got a hook on somebody that we might find useful in the future. Okay, we've got a request for somebody to start writing letters to. It's the chap who's being attacked down here. It's the chappy in the sort of southwest corner of Wales that is being attacked by our liege. So it's it's the other Maradud. It's it's you. It's the one that I got a little bit confused about. Um, okay, we'll start writing letters with you. I mean, you might not be around for much longer, so write them really quick. And, you know, first class stamps. Get it, you know, recorded delivery and all that kind of stuff. Because, uh, yes, there are troops coming in on your position right now. And you might not be around for much longer. In fact, yeah, what's the war score? Plus 36% toward our Maradud. So, yeah, it's going pretty well. What's that? Another war has appeared. Uh, Brittany. Oh! Oh, okay. There is there's another war going on, but that's our liege's war. So, yeah, that'll be yeah, that'll be William's war over down here in Brittany somewhere. Okie doke. Right, there we go. Weren't they his weren't they his buddies at some point? Weren't Brittany his allies? Are they now fighting against him or is he with Brittany? I don't know. Uh, okay. What do you want to write about? I'm not going to tell you about the peculiarities of realm administration, because, again, that's me. The blessings of a family? Uh, what do you like? You're avaricious. You like gold. You're Midas touch. You're lazy, you're fickle, and you're calm. But you like gold, you say. Uh, okay, 60 gold we're going to lose. That is a lot of gold. But we might get a lot of experience points from it, if he likes that. I imagine he's going to like that. He likes gold, surely. Oh, there we go. We can get a new perk straight away. Um, we'll get Inspiring Rule. Monthly prestige per council, uh, per powerful vassal in the council, sorry, plus 5%. So every powerful vassal on our council. We'll unlock that just because we want to get down here, really. Um, how many of those are there? Go to the council. So any of them with this little sort of, uh, sort of your know, raised fist icon there. So one, two, three. So that's an extra 15% to our prestige. Combined with all the other stuff, yeah, our prestige is going to be ticking up very, very nicely indeed. And yeah, eventually, it's it's not going to take too long for us to get toward the next level. So you acquire all this sort of all these things, and uh, this one here, if we acquire lots of prestige, it gives you levels of fame. And our next level of fame is distinguished, which will be very good if we get to that at some point soon. But uh, but okay, right, it's a little way off now. So let's see what he said about the letter. Uh, greatly appreciated. What do you want to do? Let's see if we can get ourselves. 
300 lifestyle experience. It might be 100. Be 300. Yes. Another 300. Oh, letter writing is wonderful. Okay, right. More letters. I've just noticed that we can have up to 1,997 troops. Now, we are taking a little while to replenish our levies because, yeah, we're getting new people from Leicestershire and Staffordshire and a few will have fallen in battle when we did our fights against Staffordshire and Leicestershire. But, uh, but yeah, we can get loads and loads of troops. And I was looking down here thinking, this is interesting, isn't it? Chappie there. So the, the Prince Maradud over in the Principality of De Hubarth, the one who is uh, being attacked by our Maradud, um, he doesn't actually have that much in the way of military. So are we able to join that war possibly? And if we did join in that war with our liege, would that really impress him and maybe make him give us loads of territory? I don't know. I don't know. That could be quite a good thing to do. But yeah, it's suddenly gone very badly. It was looking really good for our liege, for our Maradud, but now it's gone horribly wrong. It's it's looking very bad. So Prince Maradud is doing better against Duke Maradud now. But of course, that could all keep changing round. Social manipulation. The first time it happened, I barely even gave it a moment's thought. But my spy master Reeve Ulcetel has grown bolder. Yeah, I don't like him. I don't like him very much. Again, rubbish hat. His challenges no longer pass unnoticed at the council table. He's testing my limits. Okay, so we've got to choose what we want to do. What do we want to do here? Do we want to manipulate him somehow? So, mocking his foolishness. He's a plotter. He's deceitful, wrathful, and arbitrary. Okay, so self-conscious, cares about what others think. I don't think he does. He's got little regard for others. Forgetting to invite him leaves him in the dark. He's weak-minded or keeps to himself. Yeah, little regard to others might mean that, possibly. Uh, or commenting on his amorous lips. <laughs> ah, it's a bit weird. I mean, they are very amorous lips. My goodness. Um, or we can just say, how dare you challenge your earl? We gain a bit of stress, but we also gain some dread. And the dread is quite good for our um, prestige. So we could just yeah, shout at him and tell him to go away. I think maybe we'll forget to invite him. Because we get lifestyle experience from that. We get some stress from that anyway, but we might get a weak hook on him. We might get a hook. Hopefully he will not outwit us because that will cost us 150 of our monies. Let's see what happens with that. Is that going to work? Have we managed to outwit him? And yes, we have. Since I began to withhold information from Reeve Ulfsatel, is it wise to withhold information from your spy master? Probably not, but never mind. He has made a damn fool of himself on more occasions than I can count. Dismissing his hopelessly outdated suggestions. He has been easier than outwitting a dog. Now he remains quiet. Oh, it's cast low. Okay. Cruel, perhaps, but it had to be done. Okay. Weak hook, and he gets opinion of us. Oh, that's quite welcome. Okay, yes, we've just sort of, you know, gone showing him what's for. So, do you know what? Don't mess with us, because we will just mess with you right back, and we're probably better than you. Okay, let's get ourselves a claim in. Where do we want to get our next claim in? How about here? Earl Edric, 813, or down here, Earl Wolfstan, 928. I'm thinking just Shropshire might be our best, our best place. Is Nottinghamshire still looked after by that chappy? Yes, it is. Let's go for Shropshire, shall we? Let's get ourselves Shropshire. So you, go and fabricate a claim on Shropshire, please. How is the war going down here? Not brilliant. It might be quite a good idea to go and join in that war. I think it might impress our Maradud. It might impress our liege to the point where he might give us nice things. But do you know what, though? We will do that next time out, I think, because we seem to be at a nice point to leave it. We've got ourselves Staffordshire. We've got Leicestershire. It's looking wonderful. We're getting some quite good money coming in. And of course, that's going to increase as we get the control sorted in these places. Uh, Northampton is being slightly more developed. And we also do have ourselves our own proper troops. We're no longer relying on peasants with pointy sticks anymore. We've actually got some proper people, some actual proper trained military, which is lovely as well. And our levies are going up. It, it's looking really good. It's looking very, very good indeed. So we'll come back next time and we'll see what else happens in the tale of Earl Walthy of Stewardson. But we'll finish up for the moment. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be very splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on next time out here in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. They've ripped my arms off, ripped my legs off. I mean, you know, unfortunately they didn't rip anything else off. Yes, I'm off my face on mushrooms. Why, Lady Charlotte, I, uh, I would certainly love to taste your cake. The King of the West is an idiot. I am off my face on mushrooms. I mean, asking me questions isn't going to be my strong point at the minute.